there, Brad. Today I would like a bologna sandwich. Sure thing, Doc. How's work at the hospital? It's been a bad week. All these residents are saying I touched them inappropriately. Aw, oh, jeez. Nobody's got a sense of humor anymore. Hey, you want pimento loaf? Yes, please. I just can't get over how ungrateful those rotten kids are. You give, and you give, and you give, and when you finally try to take a little piece for yourself, they get all indignant, and then they <gasps> Oh my god! My finger! I'm bleeding! I hate blood! My finger! Quick! Get him to the hospital! I know there was a lot of bleeding, but you only sliced off your finger pad. There was really nothing for me to suture back together. But I hate blood! Oh my god! Don't let me bleed! Now, now, you'll be fine. That pressure dressing I put on should make any more bleeding very unlikely, and... Oh my god! <laughs> Look! I'm bleeding again! Brad, it's just a tiny drop of blood. You really don't need to... Fix it! Fix it now! Okay, Brad. Gosh, just relax. I'll do it again. All right, sir. I have your discharge instructions ready for you. Would you please sign here? Okay, sure. I'll sign right... No! I'm bleeding again! I'm gonna kill you people! God I came here for help! Now my dressing is messy for the second time. This is very traumatic for me. This is violating my cultural norms. I'll never trust the healthcare system again. I hate Western medicine forever, and it's all your fault. Boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. I feel terrible about the awful job we did for this poor man. Me too. If only there had been a better way. Finger pad injuries may completely spare underlying bone, but because the area is so vascular and we're always moving our fingers around, they tend to bleed heavily. Patients often return multiple times for re-bleeding episodes, and it's a waste of everybody's time. Instead of the old xeriform and gauze approach, have the patient press the pad injury down on a piece of gauze saturated with aqueous lidocaine. In the meantime, place a tegaderm sticky side up on the procedure table and then put a small blob of bacitracin ointment right in the center. If you have it, place a little piece of Surgicel or gel foam right on top of the bacitracin blob. Keeping the patient's finger pointed down the entire time, have them pick it up and put it right back down on top of the gel foam. The whole goal is to keep blood from running proximally up the finger. Next, fold up the two sides of the tegaderm and then peel off a little cardboard backing and just sort of gently wrap it around the finger. If you have it, put a little benzoin on the skin just proximal to where the tegaderm is and then wrap the whole edge firmly with a Steri-Strip to create a leak-proof seal. Then I wrap everything over with a gauze wrap, mostly to hide the icky, scary blood from the patient, and I tell them to leave everything in place for 48 hours. After that amount of time, the risk of re-bleeding is much, much, much lower, and I tell the patient that they can remove everything after soaking the whole finger with the dressing uh, in warm water and just gently peel off that tegaderm and then switch to regular dressings. With a little luck, you'll never see them again. <laughs>